Hi y'all, welcome to the new episode of Historical Personal. Let us pursue some truth about Sir C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer, popularly known as Sir C.P. or simply C.P. was an able lawyer, efficient administrator and astute politician. He was the Diwan of the erstwhile Travancore Princely State from 1936 to 1947. Travancore became the first Princely State to abolish capital punishment, first to introduce free and compulsory education, first to introduce universal adult franchise, and first to be connected to the rest of India by air. During his tenure, many social and administrative reforms were made. However, at the same time, he is also remembered for the reckless suppression of the communist organized Punapravaila revolt and his controversial stand in favor of an independent Travancore. In 1931, when Crown Prince Sri Chitra Balarama Varma was barred from succeeding his deceased uncle Sri Moolam Tirunath as the Maharaja of Travancore, C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer spoke on his behalf to Lord Willington, the Viceroy of India. The Viceroy agreed to Crown Prince Chitra Tirunath on the condition that Ramaswamy should be functioned as advisor. Sri Moolam Tirunath was the first ruler in India to establish two legislative bodies in a princely state under the guidance of Sir C.P. The proposed bicameral legislature comprised of Sri Moolam Assembly, first chamber, and the Sri Chitra State Council, second chamber, and Sir C.P. was the president of both. In 1936, Sri Chitra Tirunath personally requested Sir C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer to serve as the Divan of Travancore, which he accepted and served for 10 years. The most vital social reform measure for which he made himself responsible was the Temple Entry Proclamation of the Maharaja of Travancore in 1936. It was his condition for accepting the post of Divan of Travancore and his first act of Divan. It was the first time the Avarnas, as they were known, were accepted into Hindu temples. Mahatma Gandhi and other social reformers praised the Maharaja and the Divan for the proclamation, though the conservative Hindus opposed it. On February 12, 1946, Sir C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer visited the Government High School at Vellamadam in the state of Travancore, now Kanyakumari district, Tamil Nadu. He inaugurated the scheme of compulsory education for children above five years. He also introduced at the school for the first time in India the free midday meal scheme for poor and needy students. These two schemes were to have far-reaching results, making Kerala a 100% literate state with the highest levels of education in India. In implementing his marathon welfare projects in Madras and Travancore during an exceptional critical period of national history, CP on more force than friends. But generations to come will acknowledge that CP was the man of art needed most in a society riven by caste and creed, religion, language, and social prejudices. The role of culture, he believed, was to give people an awareness and understanding of life and the role of individual. Sir C.P. was the first person in India to suggest a plan for interlinking the rivers in the country and is also credited with the establishment of several hydroelectric power projects. He established the Palivasal Hydroelectric Power Project on the Periyar River, initiated the Pichipara Hydroelectric Scheme and the Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary Project. In 1940, under his divanship, Travancore became the first state to nationalize road transport in India, the first cement highway in India between Trivandrum and Kanyagumari, covering a huge a distance of 88 kilometers, was constructed during his tenure. He also carried out a great deal of pioneering work for the Vivekananda Rock at Kanyagumari. The city started the University of Travancore, subsequently named as Kerala University in 1937 with the Maharaja Sri Chitra Tirana as the Chancellor and himself as the Vice Chancellor. He was awarded an honorary doctorate by the University of Travancore in 1939. Capital punishment was abolished and University Alert franchise introduced in 1940. He also appointed Mrs. Anna Chandi as the first district judge, who later became the first Indian woman High Court judge. He established the Travancore Bank, which eventually became the State Bank of Travancore. He invited Indian Aluminium Company to set up its first plant in Alve to manufacture aluminium cables. He established the fertilizers and chemicals of Travancore, the first fertilizer plant in India, 
with an american collaboration he also established the travancore cement company the travancore titanium company and the travancore rayans limited the state revenue increased fourfold during his tenure as the diwan after completing the law course ramasamy did not enroll himself as a lawyer he felt an urge to abandon the legal profession and join the servants of india society founded by gopalakrishna gokhale he went to pune where he met gokhale who agreed to admit him as a member of society he also developed an admiration for ani besant and collaborated with her in organizing the home rule league ramaswami came into contact with the jawahar lal nehru when both were the joint secretaries of the home rule league ramaswami later served as its vice president and edited new india when ani besant was elected as the president of indian national congress ramaswami became the secretary in 1970 the cp was determined to implement american model reforms and support the cause of an independent travancore Maharaja Sri Chitra Tirunal issued a declaration of independence on June 18, 1947 as Travancore's declaration of independence was unacceptable to India. Negotiations were started with the Diwan. According to his family sources, the Diwan was not in favor of independence but only greater autonomy to Travancore. A favorable agreement had been reached between the Diwan and the state union representatives by July 23, 1947. Accession to the Indian Union could not be carried out because it was pending up for approval by the Maharaja of Travancore. However, an assassination attempt was made on the Diwan on July 25, 1947 during a concert commemorating The anniversary of Swati Tirunal Diwan survived with multiple stab wounds and hastened the accession of Travancore to the Indian Union soon after his recovery after he resigned as Diwan of Travancore Ramaswami Iyer left for London in 1948 In 1952-53, he visited Australia, New Zealand, and USA, either as their government guests or as a visiting professor. During the 1950s and 1960s, Ramaswamy Iyer served as the Vice Chancellor of both the Annamalai and Banaras University at the same time, thereby becoming the first Indian to do so. Sir C. P. was the patron of the Travancore Club and the Travancore Athletic Association. He was the chairman of Travancore State Sailor Soldiers and Army's Board, member of the Indian Rubber Production Board, and president of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty of Animals. In 1953, Ramaswamy Iyer was appointed as a member of the Press Commission of India. He served as a member for the University Grants Commission in 1955 and visited China as the leader of the delegation of Indian universities. He also served as a member of the Punjab Commission, the National Integration Committee on Regionalism, chairman of the Hindu Religious Endowment Commission and president of the Indian University Board of India and Ceylon in 1965. In September 1966, Ramaswamy Iyer left for England to conduct research on a planned book titled A History of My Time at the India Office Library. On September 26, 1966, while speaking to a reporter, he collapsed and died at the age of 86. Thus, the remarkable career of Sachivottama Sri C.P. Ramaswamy Iyer came to an end. Sir C.P. has been criticized as an authoritarian and anti-communist, but despite his animosity, with the communists he opposed as unconstitutional and the dismissal of the elected communist government of the kerala in 1959 after his demise the family members established the cp ramaswamy iyer foundation on october 14 1966 at his ancestral home with the objective of serving the interests of the community at large and promoting indian culture through research and development cp ramaswamy iyer Institute of Indological Research was established under the aegis of the foundation in 1981 to facilitate research and promote the study of Indian art, history and culture and to organize seminars and conferences on various aspects of Indian culture and history. Thanks for viewing this article and do not forget to subscribe.